I'm Kenny Moran from Mobile Sessions, and today we have a treat for you because we have international producer Berkman from Denmark here, and he's now spending some time in L.A., so we are uh, got to catch up with him. I'm from Denmark, Copenhagen, the capital. Um, been in the music industry for nine or ten years now. Started as a DJ when I was 14. I started growing from there with the like getting just into the music industry. It was just so interesting for me. I remember just a guy in my like primary school just showed me a video from Tomorrowland. I was like, okay, I I gotta be there. I gotta I gotta get there and play and perform that. So I was like, okay, how do I do do that? I just learned everything by myself, YouTube videos, whatever, and got out to all the parties, starting with all my friends and all that, and it growed out. So in 2018, I 2019, 2018, I don't remember, but I played a festival in Denmark, um, Tinderparks, huge festival. Huge festival. Huge festival, so nice. And it's it's it was on the electronic dance music scene, mm-hmm. um, and won a chance to just be a part of that and uh, open the stage just after some other great artists. So it's like, okay, we gotta go for it. And after that, I was like, okay, now I start to produce my own music. So I sat down, rebuilt my uh, my my studio at home in, in my parents' house. And uh, six months later, I released three singles. So it was amazing. It was amazing. I just got signed to a little label in Denmark and we released some other stuff. Amazing. And then uh, I grew from there and just wanted to do more. So in 2020, I got my own team, go, got in the independent and just got out making uh, new tracks and all that. Mm-hmm. And uh, in 2020, I released three new singles. And from there, it was during COVID, all that. We we, we did a lot of projects uh, with, with some good sponsorships we have in our deals and all that. And from there, I just used the last two years to find my path in the music industry. What brought you here to L.A.? It's always been a dream. It's always been like, I have to go to L.A. because it's here. Everything is happening here in L.A. All the good people is here. So my, I actually set the goal from like five or six years ago. I was like, I need to go to L.A. Right. More than two weeks to pursue my dream. And in 2020, it was actually the plan to go here. Then COVID hit us all in worldwide. Yeah, hit all of us. <laughs> so it was like pushed away. And uh, then I was returned back to the hamster wheel of full-time jobs and all that. Mm-hmm. And um, six months, three months uh, ago, I was like, okay. I need to do this. So I quit my full-time job and uh, ordered a ticket to, 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 to go here to L.A. Because you're a Dyn Audio person. Obviously, yeah. you've seen our studio and you've noticed that. We are a Dyn Audio uh, affiliate. I've been with Dyn Audio for some 20 years at this point as an engineer. Yeah. Tell me about you know that side of things. Do you have any recommendations for, say, young engineers or young producers, younger than yourselves that are just starting like how you started? Yeah. Like, get some speakers that is trustworthy for you, that you like. It's it's difficult to find the real and right equipment, but what do you want? Like, it's it's difficult because there's so much to choose from. Like This is true. Anything, anything, uh, instruments, uh, dolls, uh, anything, like, or what do you want? But take the simple step and just get some speakers, get a sound card, get a good mic, and get the best door you want to work in. Don't don't care about what anybody else have, but care about what you want, that you want to listen to. The interesting thing about Dyne speakers is that the consistency from model to model to model, that you always feel like you're in a in a very similar ballpark. So, uh, you know, you had your Air 15s, which were a great speaker. I still have a pair of Air 15s, but I used to have a 7-1 setup of Air 15s and a travel pair that went believe it or not, in a road case. So whenever I was working in various studios, they always came with me, no matter what speaker was in the studio, because I knew what I had. But I've used many, many series. And so now you're using the LYDs and you had the Air 15s and you really like them, but now you're coming into mobile sessions and now you're sitting in our new Atmos room, which is 100% powered by Denadio. But we're using the LYD, series similar to yours but these are the 48s the 48s a little bit bigger we have the core subs and then we have 
the fives all around. Mm -hmm. And then you were hearing them, but you didn't notice them before. But these, I believe, are the S4 C65s uh, that, that are in the ceiling. Yeah. Like? That's fucking crazy. So you get Atmos now. What an experience. The strings over there, the percussion there. You have the kick, like you can feel the whole, the harmonies out here. Just It's just running around. It's That's crazy. So now that you've heard Atmos, what do you think about the experience of being in here and listening to Atmos and what it would be like to create in Dolby Atmos? It's, it's amazing. So much detail instead of stereo it's very different it is but it's amazing an ex amazing experience just to get into the atmosphere can you describe what the what it was like when you first heard it, and like, it was like because you you know the song yeah and you've heard it a million times in stereo yeah so what was what was it like hearing that it was like being in the middle of the uh, of the whole concert it was like they were standing around me it was it was it was crazy. Just uh, you could hear the guitar in the in wrong, not in the wrong side, but in the one side, and hear some harmonies just going around you with the vocal. It was amazing. So so describable music. I I, I didn't know it could be like that. But the unique thing for us is obviously we're a mobile recording studio, yeah. and we're the first mobile recording studio with Atmos yeah. in the country in the United States. Um, I'm sure we won't be the last, but I think we just won the race to get here first. Yeah. But what do you think of the idea of it being mobile? It's so much different. Like the the, the hurl has always been, you have to be at and take to go to one studio to record something, like be being placed in one place, and there you're sitting there for twelve hours, uh, going into the studio when it's sunlight and leaving when it's dark. That's the that's the way you you work in the music industry. But here you have like the professional studio. You can go wherever you want to go and you have the Atmos as well. And you are a producer like, like many other producers. You're working with your laptop. I mean, that's your tool. And you know, you have that ready to go. You can bring it with you. Yeah. So you know you have your home base. But one way or another, you have to still get to either a studio or a location. And either you're working on your headphones or you're working with whatever they have there. So you're still based on, you know, that room. Whereas here, you're like, great, you come in with your laptop the same way, you drop it down, you plug it in, and now you have your tool, but now we're we're gonna go to the beach or we're gonna go to the mountains, whatever, but you'll have your full-fledged studio and it no longer has to just be that dungeness kind of room. So much flex. And not to take anything away from the big rooms, we love them. Yeah, we, we love them, yeah, of course. They're, they're just adjusted to good sound and all that, but that's the same here. And you can go wherever you want. So when you're producing, what inspires you? Good environment, good people, structure, and just get out there. It's, I, I've been sitting inside for two years during COVID, like many of other of us are has been doing. Right. But it's just been clear to me that go out there, hear concerts, meet people, mm. make new music wherever you want to go. Like, take this bus and go to, to interesting places. Are there any favorite moments in some of the things that you have produced? You know, we had a lot of those moments. I had one last year where one of my great uh, guys just, I, I made a track and I send it to my good uh, good producer guy in Denmark who's pitching some tracks for me, and um, he took it out. He said it was nice, and then a few weeks later, he's mailing me in the inbox. No, not even mailing me, just calling me, and I'm I, I'm just walking my dog in the afternoon, and he said, Kevin, this is crazy. We are going to pitch this to some of the greatest artists in the world. I'm like. I'm serious, I'm just standing here with my dog, just, uh, what are you saying, what are you saying, you have to explain that to me. And that was 
a big wow moment for me because then I was, okay, I'm doing something right here. So what artists have you been working with lately? Lately, I've been working with, I mostly work with pitch projects, but I also produce a lot of Danish artists in Denmark. Um, but um, I got some good projects with BTS and Jason Derulo and Timberlake on the way. Don't know if it would ever be anything, but it's, it's where we're going. K-pop as well. That's yeah. great. That's really good. What kind of experience do you want to create for your listener? What do you want them to get from it when you're when you're coming up with it? I want to get the the listeners a feeling. Give them a feeling. Any feeling. If it's sad, happiness, anything. I just want them to relate to the music I make. For many years I've been in that path of trying to do what anybody else is doing. But lately I've just yeah. been like I have to do my own thing and trust my own shit. Mm. And here from, I got to, okay, I don't just want to make music. I want to make music that matters, that people can relate to. Yeah, that's, that's what we're all feeling. striving for. Exactly. Mm.